The Talmud of Emmanuel is without doubt one of the most intriguing and controversial manuscripts in history, not least as it offers a drastically different version of historical events, including the apparent life and times of Jesus Christ himself. What's more, the backstory of the book's eventual release to the public arena is just as intriguing and rather ominous. Indeed, the discovery of these seemingly ancient texts could prove to be one of the most important discoveries of all time. So join me as we explore one of the most explosive manuscripts ever released, and quite possibly, if the writings are true, one of the most important texts in history. Perhaps the best place to start would be with the discovery of the writings that would eventually be translated into the Talmud of Emmanuel. And to do that, we need to go back to the summer of 1963 to a quiet road just south of the old city of Jerusalem. On this particular day, Swiss farmer Edward Billy Meyer was walking with a former Greek Orthodox priest, Ia Rashid. By pure chance, Meyer happened to cast his attention upwards and immediately noticed a slope that contained a small opening in the rocky exterior. Sensing that this could be something of great intrigue behind this opening, Meyer stopped and reached into his bag for his flashlight and he made his way up the slope. Once at that opening, he shined the flashlight inside. He could see something but could not make out what it was. Both he and Rashid began to pull at the rocks, eventually succeeding in making the opening big enough for them to pull themselves into. When they did, they discovered a bundle that contained several rolls of ancient-looking written manuscripts underneath a large flat rock. They also discovered a smaller and seemingly back exit that had been sealed off to disguise its presence. The further intrigue, at least according to Maya, the cave-like structure where they had discovered the scrolls was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. They took the scrolls, discovering they were written in Old Aramaic. Rashid would manage to translate 36 chapters of the manuscript before disaster unfolded. Maya, who by this time had returned to Switzerland, received the translations of the manuscript at some point in 1970. In a letter he had sent to him, Rashid explained that while he was in Jerusalem translating the manuscripts, various authorities in the city learned of his work and he and his family were forced to flee. He made his way to a refugee camp in Lebanon, but not long after, those pursuing him learned of his location and arranged for the camp to be bombed. Although he managed to escape the camp unharmed, he had no time to collect the scrolls, which were presumed destroyed in the attack, meaning the remaining chapters would remain unknown. Rashid fled to Baghdad in Iraq, where he was killed not long after, with some sources claiming he was assassinated. Maya, however, would work to have the translations published, which he eventually did in 1990. Only months before the discovery near Jerusalem, Maya made claims of having been in contact with an extraterrestrial race since he was a young child. These apparent otherworldly entities were from a planet in the Pleiades star cluster and they had provided him with a wealth of information regarding human history and spirituality, and they wished him to share this information with humanity. He claimed that since the age of five, he had been educated by several of these aliens, even being taken back in time to witness key events in history, even producing apparent photographs and proofs of his claims. One photograph, for example, he claimed was taken on Earth during the time of the dinosaurs. Another was a picture of the Earth taken from one of two moons that orbited Earth billions of years ago. Moons he would claim no longer exist, elaborating that the moon we see in our skies today only began orbiting our planet around seven million years ago. He would state that there was significant damage to the ozone layer, and that this damage had occurred during the atmospheric atomic testing that had taken place from the 1940s to the 1960s. Furthermore, these tests had released elementary radiation, bromyl, and CFC gases, something that was unknown to scientists at the time. He would continue that this damage to the ozone layer was allowing UV rays to enter the planet, 
These rays would kill off microorganisms in the atmosphere and the sea, which ultimately led to severe consequences. All of these points were proven by scientists in the early 1990s, 15 years after Meyer had made his claims. Meyer also made claims about the use of genetically modified crops, organ transplants, and the spread of veganism. Of further interest are Meyer's predictions that scientists would eventually learn how to grow meat for genetic proteins, which would be used for consumption only. This genetically grown meat would lead to scientists being able to grow new organs for people, ending the need for organ transplants. Many of Meyer's other claims, however, remain unproven and were of a much more outlandish nature. For example, he would state that our solar system, as opposed to revolving around our sun, was actually a binary system with a second hidden sun, a star that Maya called the Dark Twin, which is around one light year away. It is perhaps interesting to note that some of the conspiracy theories that speak of a global elite also state that this group worship a secret dark sun. There were also further revelations about the universe, Meyer would, for example, he would assert that there were several solar systems, one as close as only five light years away, that contained life. He offered that a planet named Melona once resided between Mars and Jupiter before it was destroyed and became what we know today as the asteroid belt. Many other researchers have pondered whether the asteroid belt is the remains of a decimated planet. Incidentally, following the publication of Rashid's translations, Maya would offer that his friend had also received a telepathic message from the extraterrestrials that he had been in contact with three years before the discovery of the scrolls in 1960. This message, according to Maya, told Rashid of the location of the tomb and instructed him to go to the location to retrieve the texts. However, rather than acting on the instruction, Rashid simply put it out of his mind and ultimately forgot about it. If we accept Maya's claims as undoubtedly accurate for a moment, whether the same aliens were responsible for Maya looking upward the exact moment he did, causing him to see the opening above the roadside. So what exactly is contained within the Talmud of Emmanuel? While there is immediate comparisons to the Dead Sea Scrolls, the content was wildly different. The writing had been penned by none other than Judas Iscariot, the same discipline who betrayed Jesus and told what he claimed was the real story of Jesus and his origins. The text states that not only wasn't Jesus the Son of God and was merely a man, but was that he was taught spiritual practices and wisdom by extraterrestrial entities. It is perhaps interesting to note that many high priests of antiquity were, essentially, ancient astronomers who had a wealth of knowledge about the solar system and the wider universe. Many esoteric teachings are of the movements and the secrets of the universe. Another interesting difference in the Talmud of Emmanuel is that instead of individuals seeking guidance to spiritual enlightenment through the church or any organized religion, it offers that individuals should be responsible for their own such development using such practices of self-reflection and meditation. What is interesting here is that many of the ancient Eastern religions teach such learnings too. Many of the gods of the Eastern religions state that the gods were not only regarded as real-life entities, but entities from another world, ultimately extraterrestrials. According to the Talmud of Emmanuel, Jesus spent several years, what most scholars call the lost years, in the East in places such as India, where he learned such spiritual wisdom and practices from wise men and masters of the region. Another apparent revelation in the ancient text is the idea that Jesus was married. So what should we make of Billy Meyer and the Talmud of Emmanuel? Many people were more than skeptical of the apparent ancient text, with some Aramaic scholars suggesting that there are errors in the writing which leads them to believe that it is not ancient or authentic. And this could also be said about Maya himself, with many people suspecting him to be perpetrating a hoax, or at least to be very misguided. In 1998, researcher and ufologist Michael Heisman retraced the route that Meyer and Rashid took that day in 1963 and explored the area where the tomb was located. 
We mentioned earlier that Meyer claimed that the location was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. When Hesman visited the location, he discovered that this area south of the old city of Jerusalem had been a burial ground for foreigners. As it is not known exactly where Arimathea is, we might assume that Joseph of Arimathea was indeed a foreigner, so would indeed have been buried on this land, perhaps lending credibility to Meyer and his claims. Extraterrestrial intervention aside, there are many other researchers and indeed ancient writings that suggest while Jesus was a real person, he was but a man teaching much more spiritual wisdom as opposed to the Word of God. Some people even believe that not only was Jesus not the Son of God, but that he was an exiled Egyptian royal who continued to practice the, even then, ancient spiritual teachings of ancient Egypt, teachings which, in a further twist, are remarkably similar to the rites and rituals of Freemasonry. The point here is that, as bizarre as the information in the Talmud of Emmanuel might be, when viewed alongside other ancient writings and research thereof, particularly those concerned with Jesus, we might just find that there are partial truths in all of them, including those Billy Meyer claimed he discovered just outside of Jerusalem in the early 1960s. It certainly could be the case that even if certain parts of the Talmud of Emmanuel are inaccurate, a large part of it could indeed be factually correct. What is certain is that researchers and scholars alike continue to be captivated by the text and how accurate it might be.